In most mammals, the Y chromosome is what leads a developing organism down the road to manhood. But this potent little man-maker has had a troubled past. Early on in its evolutionary history, it was part of a regular pair of chromosomes. But due to some random chopping and changing of the genetic code, it stopped being able to pair up properly to recombine with its partner, the X. Unable to properly exchange genes, the Y chromosome shriveled to a fraction of its former self. Now only 3% of its original genes remain. Two separate teams now publish results offering the most detailed accounts of the Y's evolution. Jeff Marsh, owner of a shriveled Y, has more. The Y chromosome has seriously shriveled since it was the identical partner of the X. But of the genes that did survive, it's now clear that this genetic material has remained remarkably stable for the last 25 million years. These two papers to come out of Nature this week offer up new perspectives about the Y chromosome's origins and its role in mammals today. By comparing Y chromosomes from all the major lineages of mammals, that is the placentals like us, to the Australian marsupials, to those strange egg-laying mammals, the so-called monotremes, we now see that this transition from a non-sex chromosome to the Y chromosomes of all mammals today may not be such a simple story. Whilst the Y chromosome obviously does still play an important role in making males, certain genes that have stuck around seem to perform functions unrelated to sex in all tissues throughout a male's life. I spoke with authors from both papers, Daniel Bellot at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the US and Henrik Caseman from the University of Lausanne, Switzerland. To kick things off, I asked Daniel why the Y chromosome has been so hard to study compared to the other chromosomes. The Y chromosome has a lot of large, highly identical duplications. Some of them are like palindromes, so like madam I madam is a palindrome, right? But these are palindromes and DNA bases instead of letters. When you sequence a genome, you're trying to put together tiny fragments and looking at the overlaps. If you have something that's not identical, you actually don't know which arm of the palindrome it comes from. That means you need to use larger fragments, and the trend in genome sequencing is to be using smaller and smaller fragments. So that's actually made Ys harder to assemble in the rest of the genome. Henrik Caseman and his group worked around these tricky problems of sequencing the Y using RNA as well as DNA. This allowed them to take a faster survey of a wider group of mammals in order to settle some questions about the Y chromosome's origins. It was thought for a long time that the human Y chromosome stems yeah, from an ancestral set of autosomes and that the sex chromosome origination event, which led to the differentiation of the Y chromosome, occurred in the ancestor common to all mammals. Now, we really refine this picture substantially in the sense that we find two independent origins of sex chromosomes, including the respective Y chromosomes, in the ancestor of marsupials and placental mammals on the one hand, and the monotremes on the other hand. And we find that actually these two sex chromosome systems emerged independently, almost in parallel. So this is quite nice, and it basically means that there was no turnover of, let's say, the, an ancestral monotreme-like uh, sex chromosome system into the ones we find in humans today. And it also interestingly raises the question of what was the sex chromosome system and the ancestor of all mammals. No one disputes that the Y chromosome has lost most of its genes since its origination and now looks very different to its old partner, the X chromosome. But what both these papers seem to be saying is that the small percent that managed to cling on and escape this gauntlet of decay now seem to have been stable for a very long time. So back to Daniel. Apart from those involved in sex determination, what are these surviving genes responsible for? They look like they're regulating things like transcription, you know, making new RNAs and translation, turning those RNAs into protein across many cell types and tissues in the body. So they're ubiquitous, they're in every stage of life and every cell, and because they have such a sort of important regulatory role, all of these XY gene pairs seem to be very dosage sensitive. So for all those genes that were lost on the Y chromosome, the X chromosome has evolved dosage compensation to turn off the second copy. But there are some genes that need two working copies, and it's these dosage sensitive genes that the males can't afford to lose from the Y. It looks like actually having a second sex chromosome, whether it's an X or a Y, is actually essential for viability. And we think what the Y is doing is actually holding on to those last few genes that ensure male viability. So that the Y is really sort of streamlined, that it's a, a minimal second sex chromosome. 
And as always, when two papers come out at the same time, it's reassuring to hear that they came to the same conclusions. Yes, so we agree with these results, and we actually support them in great detail because we see that this preferential preservation of these dosage-sensitive regulatory genes occurred three times independently in the three sex chromosome systems that we, that we could study with our data. So it seems that both these papers have changed our opinions about the role of the Y chromosome. Finally, here's Henrik again. Previously, people thought that the Y chromosome was primarily important for functions that are specific to males, so in male-specific tissues, basically the testes. Now it's clear that these genes are not specific to males in the sense that, that they have male-specific functions, just ma- important for functions throughout the body. So it's instead of, as in females, um, where they have two X copies of these genes, males just have an X on the, and, a, and a Y, but the Y then doesn't probably substantially different function from the X copy. That was Henrik Caseman and before him Daniel Bellot talking to Jeff Marsh.